morning and welcome back to the uh, to the studio. Um, I've got another box. This one's a bit bigger than the one that we had at the weekend, but probably no less exciting, uh, I think, um, for, for most of you. I, I think this is another one of those kits that's been long uh, anticipated. So we'll take a look at what's inside this box. Um, I think there are two things in here. I'm not sure, actually. I think there are. But we'll take a look uh, at one of them, and um, I hope you like what you see. So, without further ado, as they say in all the finest circles, let's take a look at this one, shall we? Okay, this is a flipping big box to be putting on my desk, so let's try and open it up from the top so that we can sort of see what's in here. I say, there are two kits. So, oh, three kits. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right. I think that this is the one that we're looking for. So, if we get rid of this. Flipping big box. Okay, get rid of some of this bubble wrap that's on here. All very exciting to get rid of bubble wrap. Pull this out. So, what we've got in here? So, P51 Mustang, really nice. Built one of the FX Mustangs a, a while back, so I'm not sure how different this kit is from the one that I've already seen but that's not really what we're looking at what we're looking at is this okay so this is what we are here to see this is um the brand new Airfix B24H Liberator. This was announced, I think, last year, and it's been released just this week. So it's finally in the shops. Um, so you can you can go out and buy this. I know all of the the major retailers have started to show this as being in stock. So it is now available. This isn't an early sample. This is a this is one that's that's been released at the same time that it's gone out to the shops. So this is first time I'm seeing this, which is very exciting. Um, so beautiful box art, as you can imagine. Box art tends to be fantastic on Airfix kits. Um, this is one of the choices uh, that's, that's in the box. I think there are two um, from what I can see. There's this one here, Corky, and also this one here, which is Valiant Lady. I'm not sure if there's a third option, but there's certainly those two are the ones that are shown on the box. So let's take a look inside and see what this kit looks like on, on first inspection. As with the, the the Marauder that I took a look at over the weekend, this is just a first look. This is not a review. So don't expect <laughs> too much in terms of, uh, of in-depth appraisal. Um, for this kit. This is just simply a quick first first look. So I'll take this these um, parts out of their plastic bags um, and we'll, t we'll take a quick quick peek. The first thing that you notice with this kit is that it's moulded once again in their hopefully now familiar dark grey plastic. Those days of, um, of, of soapy light blue gray plastic that we all had to wrestle with oh four or five years ago seems to be a thing of the past so this has come in 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 this kind of hard plastic which is really nice first thing that strikes you is the surface detail surface details beautifully incised on this as you can imagine then there are rivets as well around you can see them around the the bombay doors there if i bring it up to the camera you might be able to see those also you can see them on the on the fins as well so that's rather nice Surface detail looks to be finely engraved as well. I think that'll look really nice under, under paint. You can see it on the tail planes there. You can see that there is a a kind of a mix and match of, of incised panel lines and also those rivets. But also, I like the way that the, the fabric areas has been done as well. Is been done? Has been done. 
I seem to have forgotten how to speak. Two different styles of tail plane, of tail fins in here as well, presumably for different versions. I'm taking a look to see how they how they differ. Yeah, they do differ. They do differ in terms of um, trim tabs and that kind of thing. The details are on there a different between each one. So that points to different variants as well. I'm assuming as well, because the fuselage is broken down like this, and it's they're not full length, that this will open up other variants as well. A B24J would be seem to be a, a fairly safe bet, as would a B24D as well with the all glazed nose. So that will be interesting to see how they how they go about um, releasing different versions. Uh, this runner here includes what looks like internals of bomb bays, also gunner's positions, cockpit as well. Detail looks to be nice and fine here. Also you can see here that there are separate con control surfaces as well. These are the flaps, these are the ailerons. So that's Nice, going through, try not to catch my microphone lead. This is all very professional. I hope you um, understand just how much preparation goes into the creation of one of these highly professional videos. So this is the um, one of the smaller runners. This has got nose parts that are, are specific to the H variant. <clears throat> also in there, there are turret parts as well. So I'm assuming that this is specific to this kit, and if they were to release um, other versions, the J I mentioned, or or the or the D, this sprue will be replaced with <coughs> with a, a separate set of parts that will be specific to those variants. Once again, the 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 quality of the detail, the surface detail on these parts is absolutely beautiful, and it. And it's really shown off by the colour of the plastic. I know that seems like a really kind of trite comment to make, but it does make a difference. It, it, it's a it's a visual kind of lean in when you're looking at these parts. When you look at these in there in this kind of horrible pale bluey grey plastic and you can't really see the detail. This gives you a bit of a step up. It, it, it makes the quality just look that much better. Really nice. Weapons. Obviously full Bombay, so there's the bombs. So you've got all of those. So this area here is presumably for that Bombay and also radio operator station by the looks of things as well. Um, again, I'm just quickly flicking through these, these parts. So I haven't looked at any of the instructions. I'm just going through them quickly. So, yeah, here we go. So, engine cells and engines. So, engines are created in two banks. The front bank of of the uh, uh, of cylinders is a detailed. The rears are plain. You can see there. So they're designed just to be looked at through the opening of the of the cowling. Nothing more. They look fine. Once they're painted, they look fine. The engines don't need to be any more detailed than that. And also, what I like about that is kind of simplified it as well. Simplified the construction of the of those parts. So you're not going to need to spend too much time cleaning anything up. And presumably as well, the way it's designed creates a, a solid union with the with the wings. These are the wings. You can see how broken down those wings are and where all the separate control surfaces will go. Detail inside the inside the wheelbase as well. Separate. There's the other runner that's got wheels and also Bombay doors. Yeah, 
What's nice about this as well is that the, the surface detail on these wings is not only in size, you have raised panels as well. So if you run your finger across there, you can see them. So that's raised surface detail as well as, same on the, on the upper wing actually. There are panels here that are raised up. So it's not all recessed. Um, some effort has been made to, to, to create a more three dimensional surface finish, which I'm all for. Okay, so put all this nonsense back in here. Um, I won't take these out of their bag because I don't want them to get damaged, but this is the, there are two sprues for the huge amount of glazing that you find on one of these bombers. So that's, intriguingly, it looks as well here, I don't know if you can see this, um, maybe I should take that out of the bag because that's an interesting design idea. This, these two parts here, are the sidewalls of the turret and the guns are moulded as part of the clear part. I've not seen that before, that's a really interesting design idea. Can you see that? Yeah, that's intriguing. It'll make painting interesting, but that's a really, that's a really good idea. And that should neaten that up and, and solidify that, that, that small sub-assembly as well. Parts are beautifully clear too. But the core, they're gonna take some masking. I'm hoping that by the time this crosses my bench that there'll be a masking set out. I really hope so, because that's a that's an awful lot of cutting. So if I put those back in the bag, and we can take a look at the instructions. So instructions are here. These are going to be pretty familiar to anybody that's that's built an airfix kit recently because the instructions are what they are. Don't need to go through these page by page. But frankly, you'll be falling asleep if I do that. So as you can see, everything's kind of well laid out, well drawn out. You can see here the simplicity of the um, of the way that the engines are created. Ah, it looks like as well that you can have the gills open or closed on 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 the engines as well, which is a nice a nice addition. Yeah, that's interesting too. That's, a, that's a, a nice addition to the instructions there to make sure that the, that the wings are dry so that they're completely flat across their upper surface and not curved. You can see that here, that's been pointed out. That would be an easy, an easy thing to, to get wrong on a, on a model where the wingspan is as, as, as kind of wide as it is on this one. Sort of moving forward. You can see here, once again, FX have included uh, large spars that run through the fuselage and into the wings. So that'll create a nice solid joint there. And there you go, that shows the assembly of those, of those, of the, I think that's the nose turret. I think it is. And you can see where you've got the glazed parts there and where those guns are, are moulded in situ. Ah, intri really intriguing design idea. Uh, that's, that's, that's really interesting. I mentioned earlier on about those, those tail fins. These are the two that you use for this kit, so the inclusion of the, of the other fins does point to other variants. Not needed for this version. Chuck that in there. So, stickers, decals, transfers, whatever you want to call them. Um, here we go, nicely printed sheet. And that gives you, there are the two versions in this kit. Both versions are olive drab over neutral gray, but they've got reasonable amounts of, of kind of color on them, I guess. Um, but these are beautifully printed. Some, some stenciling to go with it as well. Stenciling for the weapons too, you can kind of see that there. I like the I like the box art one actually. I think this corky one's rather nice, despite the fact that the that this marking is on the opposite side 
um, to where I normally display my moulds. I tend to, to display them so that the left hand side faces me, but that's going to be on the right hand side. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that. Yeah, I need to, that's first world problems. We need to get it, I'll get over myself and, and work that out. Okay, so here we go. So we have the two versions here. This one, B24H, this is Cork and Corky's Burgundy Bombers, as you can see here, uh, neutral gray, underneath olive drab. This one's based at REF Old Buckingham Airfield in Norfolk during 1944. So you can see the, the markings there. Plenty of possibility for weathering on, on either of these two models. So those of you that really like to get, get weathering into place will be will really enjoy those. This is the other one. This is a bit brighter actually. So this may well be the one that I go for. Don't know yet. Um, this one is Valiant Lady. This one was based in Italy, Venosa in Italy in 1944, and it's got some yellow markings around the tail, which I rather like. So that's that's quite nice. And also, it's it's. I don't think the other one has. No, the other one, this one here, has only got the marking on this side, whereas this one has got has got Valiant Lady and also the the main artwork on both sides of the nose. So that's so that kind of suits me a bit better, I think. It's such a great looking aeroplane. I, I, I've spoken about this before, but I really do think so. It's, I know the B-17 is the, you know, is the prettier of the two, but there is something purposeful and malevolent about the B-24. I think it's a great looking machine. Really stumpy. I think it's lovely. So I'm looking forward to um, to finally building one. Despite the fact that this has been one of my favourites forever, I've never built a B24, so this is a first for me. I'm really looking forward to it. So that is pretty much it as a first look at at, at, at this kit. Just keep I keep seeing an additional just sort of flicking through, I keep seeing additional details. I'm just um, one of the things sort of looking at was I wanted to kind of check is that they've got plenty of detail. Yeah, it, it's pretty much detailed all the way through as well. I think part of that is that because you can have the side doors open for the for the gunners in the rear fuselage, you can see detail in there. So it's it's pretty much detailed front to back. So there's going to be a lot of work in in the recreation of this of this interior in this kit. I don't think you're going to get away with um, with with too much skipping of, of painting and assembly. It also says as well here that you need 25 grams of weight to go in this. So yet another tail sitter after the after the gannet that needed about four tons, and then the B26 that needed about three tons, and now this is going to need a similar amount. So I'm rapidly running out of um, running out of weight for this, and also trying to work out where I was going to where I'm going to put that. Where would you put that? Uh, oh, it looks like there's a little tro trough here. Actually, tell a lie. It says 25 grams of weight goes in this bit and then 30 grams of weight goes in this bit. So your model is going to need the thick end of 55 to 60 grams of weight in the nose. Good luck with that. I'm not sure where that's, where that's all going to go, to be honest. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Anyway, I digress. I don't really want to sort of go any further than that. So there you go. The brand spanking new Airfix B24 H Liberator is finally here. It's taken Airfix, in my opinion, far too long to cover the, the B24. I think it's been, it's an aircraft type that's been long needed as a as a 21st century release and now we have one and I think this has done the old bird more than a little justice so looking forward to starting this I hope you've enjoyed seeing this video I hope you've enjoyed um, me waffling on about it it's always difficult when I'm doing these kind of things because I want to show it you quickly but I can't really go into too much detail so hopefully that's been enough and you've uh, you've enjoyed seeing this brand new kit thanks to airfix for sending me this one and also the other two kits that are in there in the box thank you very much for that much appreciated and uh, if you like this video please subscribe drop me a comment and i look forward to seeing you next time thanks very much for tuning in see you again bye